Hi guys, I want to talk about protein amounts on a ketogenic diet and when you're doing intermittent fasting. Okay, so a couple things you need to know. The body does recycle its own tissue at a rate of 100 to 300 grams of protein every single day. So you're not losing all this protein. Your body is conserving it. We don't actually store a lot of protein. There is a pool of amino acids, but we don't store protein like we do fat and like we do sugar. We store about 17 a hundred calories of glucose in the muscle and your liver, but not the brain or the red blood cell. But we just, we need protein from the diet. So the body can make 14 out of the 22 amino acids. So we need eight from the diet, okay? Those are called essential amino acids. Um, but there's over 50,000 different types of protein in your body made from different combinations of amino acids, which are the building blocks of these proteins but we just need what gets lost. But here's a couple things you need to know. Number one, if there's adrenal stress, if you have high levels of cortisol, adrenal fatigue, that cortisol will start breaking down proteins a lot faster. It's called a catabolic response versus an anabolic buildup response. So if the adrenals are involved and maybe you're going through menopause, what will happen is you'll get more breakdown of, of muscle tissue and that's where you get the loss of collagen, weakness in the muscle. Then you have a situation where you have prediabetes or insulin resistance, which basically blocks the absorption of amino acids. So that's why a diabetic has weak muscles, they have flabby uh, tissue, and they just don't have a lot of collagen. But I really believe that a large population has insulin resistance and they don't know it. Uh, and they're just a matter of time be before they become a diabetic. So when you do keto, you're going to drop your carbs, okay? So that's going to start healing insulin resistance. But the intermittent fasting is probably even more important because you can stimulate growth hormone by 1,300% in women and 2,000% in men. And what that will do, it actually preserves and protects the protein loss, okay? So right there, that will decrease the need for a lot of protein. And not to mention that intermittent fasting is one of the most powerful things to stimulate something called autophagy, which is the recycling of damaged parts in the cell, and those are all proteins. So you're getting even more recycling of the body tissue. So the need for protein goes less, especially as you start decreasing your meals, because let's say you're doing six ounces of protein per meal, three meals a day, right? And then you go to two and you go to one. So you're not gonna necessarily do this, where you're doing three meals a day, you're gonna do 18 ounces of protein for that day, and then two meals a day, you're gonna still have that 18 ounces of protein, and one meal a day, 18 ounces of protein. That would be a huge amount of protein. That's not the way it works, because as you reduce the frequency of eating, the need for protein will go down even more because of these two things right here. So if you had two meals a day, maybe you would have an eight ounce portion of protein for each meal. Now, if you're at one meal, maybe you're at nine or 10 ounces for that one meal, but you're not gonna do 18 ounces of protein simply because there's a maximum amount of protein that your body can absorb. But the point is that um, as you do intermittent fasting, the requirement for protein is less. So thanks for watching. Hey guys, I wanted to personally invite you to a new Facebook group that I just started called Dr. Berg's Keto and Intermittent Fasting Lab, okay? so. I created this so we can share our successful actions, what worked, what didn't work, your results. So I put a link down below. So go ahead and sign up and I'll see you inside.